All right, I'm currently on the phone with Rodrigo. He's another musician that reached out about the current interview session. So I'm going to go ahead and give him the chance to introduce himself. Hi, Alex, and hi, everyone. Hi to everyone that's listening. My name is Rodrigo Blote, and um, I am the only member of the solo project uh, Blue Bonsai. I am in charge of songwriting, uh, performing instruments, recording, and yeah, pretty much the whole nine yards. It's a little baby, Blue Bonsai. All right, perfect. Well, we will definitely get into that. Uh, but let's start back at the beginning. Tell me about yourself. Tell me when you kind of first came in contact with music and realized that it had a larger impact in your life. Yeah, here's the thing, right? Like, and it, it might come uh, across as once I say it, like you might be you, you might you and everyone else that might be listening could think that, oh, we're talking to a pro- some sort of prodigy or like music extraordinary extraordinary which i'm definitely not but i've always had this very special connection with with music in a sense that i'm that type of guy that ever since i was little when i actually started um into music which i'll get into in a minute but i i'm that type of guy that can listen to a chord progression and like and, and truly feel like my day is complete like uh, vocals, harmonizations, and little details in songs that like truly like make my my skin go go crazy. You know, like it, it's just like a very um, unique connection and very special. So um, when I was uh, so I'm I was born and raised in Peru, and I came to the United States about uh, 15 years ago. I lived in Las Vegas for almost 15 years, and now I live in Florida. And the thing is that um, as a Hispanic kid, there was the primary type of music that I was exposed to when I was younger. It was uh, Latin music, salsa, like all those stereotypical uh, genres of music for for Hispanic people. But there was one good day for Chris. uh, It was for my birthday. My mom um, gave me two CDs. She uh, gave me Black and Blue by Backstreet Boys and Coast to Coast to Westlife by West Westlife. And um, I, out of nowhere, because I probably didn't have anything better to do, I listened to the entire albums, both of them. And ever since that moment, like I, I started, I, I got into the habit of listening to full albums and kind of like to understand like the, the bigger picture. And I, I was like probably six seven years old and i thought that i was some sort of rock star like because i wanted to be like uh the guys in backstreet boys which is ridiculous sure Uh, but my life completely changed the day that one good day out of nowhere i listened to uh boulevard of broken dreams by green day Mm -hmm. on mtv that was life-changing for me because it was like again like having the hispanic music background and then just moving into mainstream pop and then being exposed to this darker like grittier type of music and then right around the same time i was i listened to uh take off your pants and jackets by blink 182 Mm -hmm. and um three cheers for uh sweet revenge but uh my chemical romance and i was just I was introduced to such a different world and it was, it, it was something so special, but it, it, it kind of, especially those type of lyrics, because yes, although I was born and raised in Peru and our main language is um, Spanish, I I did have uh, a lot of English classes and, and coaching. So like I, I did, I, I was the type of guy that I would go after like the booklets and like try to understand the lyrics to the best of my abilities and you had songs such as uh, Stay Together for the Kids uh, by Blink-182, which I, I, I am a, a kid that comes out of a broken home and divorced parents. So that was like huge. And I, I felt seen for the first time. So and and it was when I saw uh, the, the DVD for that particular tour uh, by Green Day, which is called Bull, uh, Bullet on the Bible. And I saw Billy Joe Armstrong play 
the songs and like people having this such a visceral and emotional reaction to to music that I was like, I want to do that. I have no idea how, but I I, I want to be able to to play guitar and sing songs. And yeah, I I I'm self thought. Uh, I'm a self thought guitar player, which when I was younger it was very mm-hmm. cool to say out loud. But in retrospect, like it's the worst thing that you can do. If there's anyone that's <laughs> listening, like please go get lessons because it took me years to correct the all the bad habits that I developed mm-hmm. being a self thought player. Sure. So uh, on that note, let's talk a bit about how that transition happened. You know, you you figured out that this was going to be something major in your life that you wanted to commit to and then started learning an instrument. How did that transition into uh, beco- becoming comfortable enough to begin writing with the instrument? It's 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 funny because all, all, all of my music is very personal, but every and, and i have a very wide uh range of artists that i enjoy for example and uh, which makes me not be respected by by any of uh the subcultures of it for example um uh, once i got into punk rock and pop rock i did the, tra- the transition to metal i listened to corn slipknot and all those bands and then it once you start in that path, it only gets um, heavier. <laughs> and I ended up listening to bands like Cannibal Corpse, and then I listened to hardcore and all these all these uh, variants of metal. And when I was a kid, I was like, oh, uh, I'm trying to be tough, and that's all I want to listen. But it wasn't until I got older that I started embracing back like those all, all those different spectrums of the color, like. Of, of the rainbow for example i love coldplay i love uh ed sharon like i i as songwriters i think they're majestic and i also like taylor swift and you know like i like all these different bands and you might be asking like what does that have to do with the question and it's that one of the primary i, I would say that my primary influences are Blink-182, Green Day, Ed Sheeran, and Coldplay. And my music sounds nothing like it. And it's because every song that I write starts off frustration. Mm -hmm. Because I am such a horrible singer that I could never perform the songs that I wanted. Like, I, I always feel that I was failing miserably at performing these songs like oh i want to do a cover of uh, how you feel by uh ed sharon or like i want to do a cover of um ink by coldplay and i listened to my vocals and my performance overall and it was like it's horrible so i started learning about songwriting and um i did like a bunch of online courses and stuff like that because i was like okay if if I suck so bad at performing other people's music, I want to be able to write something that I'm going to be less horrendous at. And and it's funny because, again, like every song that I write starts off as an acoustic song, which is trying to imitate like those great acoustic songs that Coldplay and, and Ed Sheeran have. And I fail every single time. And it's it's when I'm failing that then like all this frustration and all these um this background that I have on other type of music such as punk rock and pop and pop punk comes in and I'm like, okay, this cannot be an acoustic song because it's horrible, because my vocals are not good enough. Mm-hmm. I need to put instrumentation, like more instruments. I need to to be louder i need to be more aggressive and that's how i end up where where my tracks usually end up okay so that kind of uh nicely segues into like the next round of questions kind of about uh you know how did you select uh your project uh and by that i mean how did you kind of figure out the genre that you wanted to write in um and then also how did you kind of identify the type of content that you wanted to write like what did you want to create about 
Right. So uh, you mean like as, as far as uh, the theme of the content? Yeah. Yeah. So, so like I said, like one of my, my first love affairs with music was pop punk and it has always been pop punk. Like, and I, on a daily basis, I'm listening to bands such as like Alkaline Trio or like very heavy music such as uh, some like Knock Loose or uh, Kubla Khan. And I think it's, I, it's funny because as far as liking music, I don't like the middle ground. It's like either I like it very heavy or very soft, which, you know, Taylor Swift, Swift would fit, fit that. But um, I, I just feel that I, I write pop punk or punk rock. I, I would say it's like uh, some sort of variation of what um, Blink and Green Day do, but you know, less talented and, but, <laughs> but, but, um, that's, that's like, that's just naturally what it comes out when, it, when I'm, when I'm writing, like I, I might have mm. some elements of the rawness of like the other styles of music that I listen to, such as hardcore and, and metal, but it, it always just flows naturally to be, um, to be pop punk which again but but it starts always as a ballad always as a failed uh cold play song and and as far as the themes i that that's another thing because there's a lot of artists that they write music because they feel that you know they they want to I don't know. They they have this sort of talent or or something like that. In my case, it's just all my songs are personal, and and they're about things that I just cannot keep my mouth shut. Although I should, because of, of how deep and personal they are, and I just my only hope is to be able to have someone else listen to my music and just feel like hey you know it's okay to feel that way too that's how i felt when i listened to uh blink 182 and green day especially the american idiot album back then like i felt like seen and yeah that that's kind of what i'm always aiming at okay so you kind of went into a bit there about how uh the music you create is uh directed and the intention of it is to be able to resonate with other people and get them to kind of understand where you're coming from as well as kind of connect with them to show that you understand where you know they've been because of where you've been sort of thing um how has that kind of manifested in your life what uh memories do you have of music that have had that impact on you aside from what you've already mentioned about connecting with like green day and blink 182 so uh, that's like a two-part answer question and the first is like i i just want to mention it that uh because of that approach i have um got in trouble more than i should have because again like i just don't know how to keep my mouth shut but um i i feel that a lot of, i i like when artists are honest and they they don't you know like there's a lot of music that it's just tailored to be um applicable to anyone like you, you just paint with the white brush hoping that you know these sort of metaphors or like oh these ideas will like come across um as something universal and anyone could listen to it and and you know uh, relate to it but i respect a lot when artists are like hey like this is straight up like a personal issue this is something like for example there's a song <clears throat> um by uh brian fallon by uh the gaslight anthem uh that's his band but on his solo project there's a song that he has which is called 21 days and it literally talks about like the struggle and what it said widely which is um that it takes 21 days to stop like feeling the withdrawals from um 
advice or at least when you're first starting like and and that type of music like to me resonates a lot because it's like that that's not trying to appeal to anyone that is just like this is how i feel and i just can't keep my mouth shut and i just say it and and that means a lot to me okay sure um so tell me about what's going on with blue bonsai are you uh putting music out i know you have some material out there already are you working on new stuff yeah i am so um i am currently so it's funny because uh i've been writing an l an ep for the past three years if not four and um i've always like just stop at multiple times because it music wasn't good enough or stuff like that but then i just started like like about three months ago um one day like i just got this stroke of inspiration which i mean it's it's relative because to be honest like i'm always writing music i have a notebook uh full of lyrics that i uh write on every day uh, i have like a thousand and i'm not exaggerating uh voice notes with like melodies ideas and stuff like that but like that one day like i was able to put together like five songs and and be like you know what like i'm just gonna record this i'm not gonna overthink it and i'm just gonna put it out because it just feels true to me right now and which are the singles that i've been been putting out because um lately like i feel that the singles especially as a less lesser known artist it's a better approach it's kind of like um you know you have five bullets and still instead of shooting shooting them all at once like you can do it like periodically and try to capture a little bit more of attention if you know you get it so uh, i have a single that's coming on the 19th of november which is called in waves and by the end of the year i'll release the last single out of this entire batch of songs that i recorded a few months ago uh, which is called janice smile awesome that's great um so you have that stuff coming out where can people find you and check that stuff out uh i'm on all major platforms uh streaming platforms uh spotify apple music um youtube as well um and yeah i'm i'm constantly posting uh music and stuff that i'm working on there like yeah you can find me and uh, on streaming platforms as blue bonsai and bonsai with z as in zebra which is funny because that was a uh, it was a, a friend of mine who's a tattoo artist i asked him to do um like some sort of uh, fonts for for the project and it wasn't intended to be when z is in zebra and he did it just like that and i just kept it <laughs> nice all right uh well i'll get links for all that stuff so i can make sure it gets tagged and everything but i always like to give the person i'm interviewing the opportunity to put out their last word so what's a message that you have that you want other people to resonate with if you are a musician or an artist that is writing music um just be honest with the music that you're writing in the sense that uh don't try to appeal to to the masses just because you're trying to appeal to the masses uh one of the songs that i released not too long ago which is called entropy um the way i wrote it i thought it was blatantly uh obvious about what it was like i i i didn't pull any breaks and a lot of people interpreted the lyrics in a completely different way, which is such as, for example, they were telling me, oh, this is like a breakup song. This is a letting go song about a failed relationship. And, you know, I resonate with that, which is absolutely not what the lyrics are about. And I'm not mad about that. Like, I actually, you know, I, I find it flattering because a lot of um, the great artists and musicians that I've enjoy um tend to have that duality in their lyrics uh that song it's it's about grief it's about how i lost someone in my life that passed away and 
I, I have this constant uh, struggle with feeling that I, uh, as time progresses, I'm I'm losing memories and I'm losing, um, I'm losing like all these things that I used to have so fresh in my memory, such as the uh, the way the this person smelled and like the touch of their skin and how they felt under my fingers. And, you know, as time progresses, like I just feel that I am missing all these details. And it instead of just feeling that I'm closer to closure, I, I feel that I'm like constantly betraying the memory of the person that I lost and, and loved so much. So um, just because I was brutally honest about it, I feel that uh, it came across a different way, but it was relatable, not because I was trying to uh, pander or because I was trying to write something that was universal. It was It's a very deep and personal song, and I was fortunate enough that some people resonated with it. And yeah, that that's kind of like my message. Just be honest with, with the music that you're writing. 